So first up, I'd like to invite the member for Newcastle, Sharon Grierson, to uh, make a couple of comments. This week I actually rang the CEO, Greg Highwood, the CEO of Fairfax, and spoke to him about their plan to offshore all production, graphic, advertising, administration, all those other jobs. Now his defence that this is all about moving to online press. Uh, they are innovators, they are leaders. I put to Greg Highwood, if this is all about the new knowledge centres that are going to lead this transformation of media, then why not put it here at the Newcastle Herald? In 25 years of addressing rallies over community issues and people's job security or losses of jobs or company collapses or workers' comp or anything else that the Labor movement has stood for and fought for, this is the first time I've been able to share a platform uh, with people from such a diverse political spectrum. So I've been handing out a few union tickets up here to some of the subsequent speakers and I welcome them. And that's what Fairfax have achieved. They've brought the broad community of the Hunter together, uh, people from very diverse backgrounds, very diverse interests, and they've brought us together, I think, around two issues. One is the immediate concern for people who face the loss of their jobs and their families. They are the most immediately and directly affected by the decision of Fairfax during this week, a decision that we have to have reversed. The second thing... The second thing that I think has evidently brought us all together is concern that we have news in our region, in the Hunter region, that is done for Hunter people by Hunter people. That's extremely important. It can't be done out of New Zealand. The Newcastle Herald is a very well supported publication in this region because it reflects the region's interests. As a politician, sometimes I get a bit cranky with the way some of the things are written up or what a sub-editor might do. That's just part of the game. But at the end of the day, I will fight for the Newcastle Herald and I'll fight for its workforce. If we stick together, if there's anything I've learned in life, stick together, make your case, you can turn bad decisions over. Stick with it. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon everybody and uh, great turnout. Um, as you can see from all of us up here, this crosses the political divide, independents, Labor and Liberal up here because it's part of our town and our region and it's a strong support for what we think is rightly one of the best newspapers in Australia and it is absolutely disgusting that this is being done and being taken away from us for what I think are just pure monetary terms. So. I can assure you from all of us who stand up here today, we are going to be talking to Fairfax and we'll be putting the point directly to them that this is about a fantastic newspaper. Offshoring this to New Zealand is just is the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard of. I mean, it's just madness. So from our perspective, we're certainly going to be fighting very, very hard to keep it here and we'll do so. So all I can say to you all is let's keep up the good fight together. We're all with you. Labor, Liberal, Green, Independent, we're all supporting all of us who live in this town and in this region to keep this great newspaper running here. And it's about jobs. Let's think about what do we do for young journalists who want a career in journalism, join the Newcastle Herald and there's nothing to go to after that in the region. It's just disgusting and we won't, we're won't. we not going to allow it to happen. We're going to be fighting very, very hard to keep the newspaper here. So thanks very much, everybody. Let's keep it all together and work hard for it. Thank you. But I want you to know, I understand your feelings. I understand the difficulties you feel at the moment and the annoyance and the frustration. And you should know that I've experienced that at times too. I've experienced that when the people who make the decisions are making the wrong decision and you know it and you feel helpless and difficult to do anything about it. I know what it's like and I know how you feel today. And if you want an example of that, Right behind me now the streets denuded. That decision was wrong and I couldn't stop it. And I want you to hope. I want to give you hope. I want you to hope you can stop this. Because I believe together we've got a good chance of doing that. 
I believe in the united front will change the mood and the thoughts of those people that are on the Fairfax board and others that have introduced this ridiculous measure. I want to give you some hope that if we work hard together we can achieve that. The brand that we know is the Newcastle Herald is a brand that is probably the most important brand in the Hunter Valley. And when we think about that being taken away, I become annoyed, I become frustrated, and I know you do as well. The original masthead, the Newcastle Morning Herald and Miners Advocate. Well, you know what? The Herald has been the advocate for the Hunter Valley for over 150 years. And if we lose that advocacy, we will lose part of our personality, part of our community. We must fight to keep this. I want you to know, personally, I give you every support you can that's available. And I want you to know that I believe in what you're doing. Congratulations on getting us together at short notice. You need to keep at it and you need to know that there are many people supporting you because it is our paper in our community produced by local people. Let's keep it that way. Thanks for letting me hear. The Newcastle Herald, the Newcastle Herald, tell our stories. You are our local people. You tell our stories, whether we like it or not. Sometimes, I think it's one of the other speakers said, sometimes we don't, we don't like it. But most of the time, you guys tell the stories as they are. And you are our local people. You have empathy. You are physically embedded in these towns. You are uh, emotionally invested. Your families are here. Your jobs are here. This is where the jobs should remain. They should not go offshore. It's a wrong move. And I appeal to Mr Highwood and Fairfax to reconsider the proposal and consider the impact that this will have on our town and our paper. Castle Herald is the major regional newspaper. It's the place we go to for information about our towns, about our communities, what's happening in the region. We don't always get up in the morning and look at the, at the paper and say, fantastic. Well, actually, I often do. It's great to see Newcastle or the Newcastle Knights on the front of the Herald rather than Lake Macquarie Council. But I'll, but I'll tell you what, when you look at it in perspective, it generally works out pretty fairly. OK, and it's not all just about politics. As Cordelia said, it's about telling our stories. If I look for a Newcastle Herald, it ain't all about Lake Macquarie or about Newcastle or about Maitland or Cessnock or whatever. It's telling stories about the people of our region. We have this struggle, and I re respect the fact there is a struggle in competing with the changing modes of, of disseminating and receiving information. But, you know, one thing I reckon is going to stay in fashion and we'll come back more strongly into fashion, that's loyalty. And loyalty is what we've got in truckloads here in the, in the region. So we're going to loyally stand with Newcastle Hill. Thank you very much. I have a letter here from uh, Hunter Councils, the chair of Hunter Councils. And if you'll just excuse me while I read it to you. A healthy democracy requires a healthy media. In the case of the Hunter, Healthy democracy requires its print media to be in touch with our region, its people and its issues. By robbing the Newcastle Herald, our largest and most important newspaper, of a large measure of control of its coverage of local stories, Fairfax is weakening its ability to our region about social, political, economic and environmental issues that are important to us all. Hunter Councils respects the contributions that the Herald makes even when that contribution is to hold up local government to intense scrutiny. A fearless media is a good media. By beginning the process of weakening the Herald, Fairfax is beginning the process of downgrading its contribution to our region and our region's future. We must resist this change and support in whatever way we can the integrity and strength of this long and essential institution. After all, isn't that the Hunter spirit? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just ask, could I just ask that those people who are likely to be affected by this move, if you could just put your hand up. How about we give a round of support and applause to these people. We're here to help you. Has there been anything in this city for 150 years that could be reported with such support from every political party, every person involved in local, state and federal government are here today 
to support the community and support our paper. 150 years of history reporting our stories, our local stories for the hunter. Other regions uh, in this country do not have that heritage. We need to protect that heritage as a community. And I can see that we're going to do that today. So I'm just going to say, local jobs, local people, local news. Solidarity. <laughs> Sydney and also at The Age went out in strike in solidarity with those facing job cuts up here. <laughs> Nobody ever takes industrial action lightly, but I have to say it was one of the easiest strikes, one of the easiest decisions we ever had to make. We have strong relationships as journalists with those who work in Newcastle and the Illawarra. Many who worked on those great papers end up working with us. And the day before we went out, one of the sports subs said to me, look, we've always gone out for you when you've had job cuts and we knew the day would come when you would go out for us. That day came and we were proud to walk out with you all. That is the company did not see it coming. They were ashen-faced. They did not understand why we at the Sydney Morning Herald would walk out with you. That is because they can't understand. And that is why we are union. This fight isn't over. We are in a consultation period with the company. On Monday, union representatives from Sydney, Newcastle and the Illawarra will meet with the company and try and make them see sense. It's now up to you. Make your voice heard loud, contact the company and tell them to change their minds and keep jobs local. Thank you. When you look at these things from a business perspective, I guess you've got to think about well, why, from a business point of view, would you, would you make such a decision? My understanding from the, the numbers that have been mentioned to me, Fairfax in this region, the Herald and, and its other organisations, are one of the few Fairfax operations which are actually turning a profit and adding to the bottom line of Fairfax throughout Australia. Officially. How in the hell can people in, uh, in New Zealand understand this community, write with a balanced approach, if it has no idea of the area, the players and what the long-term history of this town's been? Um, it's little wonder to me that the Fairfax shares are where they are when they make business decisions like this. This is absolutely appalling. It's not often that we all come together. I can't remember the last time that I stood shoulder to shoulder with everybody from the rabid right to the loony left. <laughs> and we all fit in there somewhere. But this issue cuts across every political uh, nuance, it, it cuts across every social standing or ranking, it cuts across everything because let me tell you from a business perspective, this decision is just plain dumb. It's about the history of the Herald and it's about the sport and as we know 
The Knights are going through a pretty tough time. Do we want the Knights to be replaced on the back page by the Warriors? Straight out of New Zealand? I think not. And we all know in New Zealand they eat fish and chips. Well, we don't want our vowels tossed around by a group across a ditch. So, and since Big Jean has come on the board, if you heard Barry Humphreys the other night, she's certainly put a hole in things. And, of course, she's on the board now of Fairfax, so we don't want Gina particularly telling us in our community what, what we want. And, and as Mark and I were saying, you know, little things in the Herald, like the surf report, like the women in sport, and there could be more of that, by the way. But, um, <laughs> things like that. We need to preserve those things, and we need, you know, we've had some massive campaigns in this city, and if they start, if you dwindle away at the social fabric of, of what we love and stand for in Newcastle, then... You know, what have we got here? Hi everyone, it's great to see a big turnout here today. Um, but the Newcastle Herald's like an institution in my family. I grew up sort of watching my dad read it. When I was old enough, I started reading the paper as well. Um, I still buy the paper every day and read the paper. And I think the journalism in the Newcastle Herald is second to none anywhere in the world. Uh, with my travelling, I've got to read uh, from other countries. and. The staff do an incredible job on the paper, and I know Greg Ray behind me, I'm not sucking up to him, but he's been on fire with his columns the last couple of weeks. <laughs> but as well as the, the incredible journalism in the paper, there's also a whole team that actually puts the paper together under the journalists, so it's a team effort that sort of makes the paper happen. Um, and it seems insane to me when you get an organisation that, from what I understand, is actually making $15 million out of the Newcastle paper and it's one of the most profitable papers in the country that you just can't understand why they're even considering a, doing it, um, a, a decision like this. It just seems completely insane. Like I read things in the paper sometimes about various things and you wonder what people are thinking and with this decision I really wonder what Fairfax is actually thinking. And I also think it's, it's sort of systematic of what's happening in this country that people's endeavours in um, the businesses and the people that, that they work for, sometimes I think they're actually underappreciated because it's the people that make businesses successful and it's the people that put this whole paper together that make the Newcastle Herald the success of what, is, what it is. But I think a lot of the time that there's too much interest on the shareholders and actually making money for the shareholders and not about the people who put the paper together. So I actually wish that I wasn't here today because if I wasn't here, this decisions with Fairfax wouldn't even be considered. So I just hope in the outcome that sort of people power will win. Uh, Fairfax will actually listen and realise what an incredible crew they've got putting the paper here and how important it is to the Newcastle region and also how important it is for local people to be working on the paper. It would just seem insane for jobs to be outsourced to New Zealand. So I hope there's a wonderful result. I really hope that no one sort of loses their job over this. Thank you. One is that Fairfax management is talking about there will be no reduction in quality. No reduction in quality. That's bullshit. There will be a reduction in quality to the offering provided by the Newcastle Herald. And why? Why will there be a reduction in quality? Because the corporate knowledge, the historical knowledge, and the knowledge provided by sub-editors who work and live in the community is just dissipated. It's not diminished, it's gone. Totally gone. It's a very, very profitable newspaper. And when you start to take away people from that newspaper, what you're doing is asset stripping. You're stripping the assets. And back in the 80s, back in the 90s, that was corporate criminal behaviour. What we've got to do today, after we leave here, is we've got to write to Hyman, we've got to write to management, we've got to say it's not acceptable. We won't accept it because of reasons of quality and care about our community. Thank you. Um, but we're here today for a very specific reason. We're here to keep the Herald in the Hunter. That's what we're here for. And the Newcastle Trades Hall Council and the local unions support the workers and support the paper 150% and will do what is necessary to keep it in the town. That's, that's our pledge. We are used to fighting within the union movement. It's what we unfortunately do most of the time. And one thing I've learned in my many years as a union official, if you don't fight, you lose. 
you must fight. Everybody that's here today, go away and tell 10 more people, who tell 10 more people other than that. Ring, fax, send emails, bombard Fairfax headquarters with your opinion saying this is our paper and it's not going to Tasmania because if you don't get in, you'll win. You can always win. Fight on. I said Tasmania. Jesus, that's going to get me in all sorts of trouble. Um, sorry, sorry, Tasmania, New Zealand. Although I do love uh, the colleagues and comrades in New Zealand as well. But anyway, never give up, never give in, guys. We can win this. Thanks very much. Danny, my here representing the, the CFMEU, which is the Construction, Forestry, Mining and Energy Union, but I'm also wearing the hat of the Maritime Union of Australia. And I can, uh, I can say to this gathering that those two organisations have had some deliberations and you have, have got the full support of those two most powerful unions in Australia. I think I'll pick up one of the slogans that's out the front of one of those billboards. It's, I think it's save our town, save our jobs. And we've got to let them know that this, this is not only save the jobs, it's our paper, it's our town, and it's our fight. Now, I don't know what's in the drinking water, but there has been some very crazy decisions, in my view, uh, made about employment of late. And this is just another example of it. We've got the richest lady in the world in Western Australia announcing that she needs to bring in 1,700 workers from the cheapest labour resources in the world to, my, to, to construct a mine in Western Australia, whilst we have the same announcement on the same day of 3,000 workers being sacked from Hastings, Australia. Absolutely crazy. I must say, I never thought I'd be standing in front of the same microphone and on the same platform and advocating the same cause as Hilton Grujon and Jeff McCloy. Um, those of you who read in Newcastle Herald will, will know why I'm saying that. Uh, I, I'm used to singing along with the People's Chorus. My partner's actually in that choir. But uh, I tried to rouse them to the Solidarity Forever. Uh, I saw their lips quiver, but I'm sure I also saw their feet tapping. So, so it's very, it's, I guess we should thank Fairfax for bringing our community together in a way that we probably haven't seen for many, many years. We're always great in this kind of adversity. Yeah. A, a perspective that I do bring, I, I, I'm known by people uh, for my association with the Greens, but I've also worked for Fairfax, it was quite some time ago, over two decades ago. I've been a journalist. I taught for 20 years. Uh, as a communication academic at the University of Newcastle. Some of the journalists who are now working for the Newcastle Herald are students of mine. And uh, one of the things that they will know that I tried to impress on them uh, in terms of learning the profession of journalism, because of course you do when you're a journalist, you work in an industry and an industry is business. We've heard from business people about why this is a, a terrible business decision. For the, my journalism students, what I impressed on them is that they belong to a profession. And that profession has what amounts to a sacred trust. It's an institution in our democracy that protects our democracy. It's the watchdogs of our other institutions. In, in the profession we call it the fourth estate function. You're part of the fourth estate and your role as a journalist is to make sure that our other institutions that form our democracy are functioning properly. Now, it's interesting, I came here, I was a bit late to this event, because I had to stop on my way to an incident that I was called to where trees are being removed from Gregson Park in Hamilton. Now, I'm not here to talk about that. You know about it now, because I've just told you about it, but if this wasn't happening, the only way you would know about that event is when you pick up your paper on Monday and read it in the Newcastle Herald. And if uh, this, these jobs are exported to New Zealand, no doubt what will happen is that we'll get a Newcastle Herald journalist down there and they'll report that this thing happened in Gregson Park in Hamilton. Uh, the word will come back saying, what's this Gregson Park and where's this Hamilton? Uh, that's what will come back from New Zealand. Now, those kind of things, we can make a bit of a, a joke about those. Those kind of things are minor, although spelling and punctuation, as my journalism students will hear me say again, matters. But they won't know. Those, those people in New Zealand who are doing the subbing, they won't know that there was a bit of an issue about trees in Newcastle uh, and the community. It actually happened in this place right behind us, and they won't know about that. They will lack the kind of context that 
sub-editors have to put news into. Uh, news, newspapers are a bit like buildings in that sense. Uh, what they look like is what you see on the outside. You see the wall panels, you see the jip rock, all of that kind of stuff. But that's not what keeps the building up. What keeps the building up are the editorial support functions that go behind it. They're the subs. They're the ones that they're going to want to export to, to New Zealand. It doesn't make sense... It doesn't make sense from the point of view of business, but it also doesn't make sense from the point of view of what keeps a local democracy thriving. We need to get that message loud and clear to Fairfax that it's the Newcastle Herald, not the New Zealand Herald. I was really pleased when they put that word Newcastle back into the title of the Herald. There was a little while ago where they finally forgot about that, but they put it back in. I was really pleased. It's the Newcastle Herald, not the New Zealand Herald. It's our community, our local community. It's our town and it's our local democracy and the Newcastle Herald needs to be kept local. This isn't... Uh, this isn't just about some jobs, although I must admit that hurts. This is about Newcastle. This is about a Newcastle institution. And it's about uh, the, the, the future of one of the most important news outlets in the Hunter Valley. Uh, it's really quite an extraordinary thing that uh, Fairfax, from uh, their ivory tower in Sydney, have suddenly decreed that uh, they think they can make our newspaper better in New Zealand than we can do it right here. I really can't understand what they're thinking. I think there's a possibly, uh, I can understand they've got a few things on their mind at present in their corporate boardroom, but uh, this appears to be a bit of a, a panic-stricken move. I think they've made a terrible mistake. It doesn't work from uh, any perspective. It doesn't work from a business perspective. It certainly doesn't work from a community perspective. And I hope we can uh, explain to Fairfax that they've made a terrible mistake before they actually go ahead and do this. As you, you probably already understand, but what happened this week was that Fairfax dropped an amazing bombshell. This is a company that's supposed to specialise in uh, communication. That's its business. So without the slightest skerrick of communication or consultation, they've dropped the bombshell that, uh, guess what guys, we know that for the past eight months, you've been working on a, on a plan to take your, your media organisation onto an online platform. We know you've been doing that, and we've been encouraging you in that. That's very good, well done, guys. You know, eight months of, of hard work. But, bugger that, it's going in the bin, and we're sending half your jobs to New Zealand because we think we can find somebody over there who can do it for half the price. Oh, when this news was dropped this week, I gotta say, I, uh, as a person, looking at my colleagues about to lose their jobs, I was uh, uh, physically sick. I was just appalled as a person. As a journalist, looking at what it's going to do to a journalistic product, I'm even more appalled. When I look at it as a Novocastrian, looking at a, a, a very proud Novocastrian institution, I'm so appalled I just can't even find words to describe it. I just, Fairfax, wake up, you're making a big mistake, and there's a lot of people here today are going to tell you the same thing. Yeah.